Hello everybody! Welcome, welcome! It is Pink Sheep and Friends Friday! This is episode 43 of Pink Sheep and Friends and if you are new to my channel or new to this series, my name is Evelyn. I am the maker behind uh, Pink Sheep Design and every Friday, or almost every Friday, um, I try to go live with other makers from the fiber community. Um, this could be anyone from crocheters and knitters, hobbyists, um, small businesses, yarn dyers, yarn spinners, um, hook makers, so pretty much anyone in the community and in the fiber world. Um, and it's, it's just a fun way for me to connect with other makers. It's also a fun way for me to introduce you guys to new makers and help you grow your community so that we can make this community strong and supportive and wonderful like it already is and just make it even better. <laughs> so um, I'm super excited today. Uh, I've got my coffee. I'm wearing my new pattern that just got released yesterday. So this is the Power Puff Vest. So super excited about that getting released yesterday. It's got the hood. I was going to have my hair up, but then I realized I might want to show the hood off of the <laughs> Power Buff Vest. So you can now find this in the Etsy shop. Um, but I'm super excited today to go live with Laverne of Busy Peach. Um, if you guys don't know her, um, or you may have actually watched her Saturday morning shenanigans videos. Um, she goes live every Saturday, which I will actually get to go live with her as well um, in the coming weeks. So that's super exciting. Um, and let's see. I know she said she had to grab some things so that we could play a little show and tell while we were here. Uh, but let's see if she is here. Here we go. There she is. Okay. G. <laughs> I feel like I drank more than enough coffee today. I feel like I've got plenty of energy. <laughs> so you may can tell. Okay, let's see. And please let me know, Laverne, if you are having any issues with the join, um, if you can see that or not. Let's see. Give it a minute. But yes, I actually had to switch to doing like a half decaf, half um, caffeinated coffee because it got to a point where I was drinking way too much caffeine um, and way too often throughout the day. So that was kind of becoming a problem. Uh, so cheers to um, adding a little decaf in the mix so that I can continue to drink my coffee throughout the day and not get the jitters. Okay, let's see. I'm going to make sure. Let me try and resend the invite. And if you have to leave and come back, I've had that issue happen. Um, so if you have to, okay. It looks like she's coming back. There we go. Hi. Okay. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was having, I'm having tripod issues. I got to get gotcha. a Gotcha. <laughs> no worries. I'm so glad you joined. Yay. Hi. How are you? I'm good. good. How are I'm you? Good. Sorry while I jiggle this a little bit. You're good. It, it Take keeps, your time. Look, it keeps doing like this. Uh, <laughs> I think I got it. Okay. Well, Hi. And you never know when it goes live where it's going to put you. So I've had to like move my screen up and down. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I think y'all can see me. <laughs> yes. And so I know before when I see you go live, you've got your darn behind you. So where are you now? Are you in a different place? No, I'm in the same place, but we just came back from Vogue Knitting Live. And so the grid walls are over here being gotcha. re restocked and then they'll come back and I'm debating on uh, if they're going to stay on the wheels or just sit on the floor. So yeah. I have to figure it out. Yeah. So, so when you when you have your wall up, that is how it looks if you go to a show. So you just keep it set up behind you. Is that your yarn room situation, office situation? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so the office situation is that it's um, everywhere in the house. <laughs> and um, I I did a show with one great wall set up, and I didn't uh -huh. like it. So I did I changed the like the bases. And yeah. I set it up behind me. So that was what I would hope to be at yeah. a show. 
Gotcha. Um, I was very lucky at Vogue that I had good friends that, whoops, had grit walls yeah. um, up in New York. So I was able to borrow there. Oh, no. um, nice. So yeah, so I haven't actually used that setup yet, but we're, we're trying, um, you know, it'll be coming. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I skipped the intro because that's usually what happened. I just jump in and want to know how things are going. But okay. for anyone who does not know you and maybe doesn't follow you here on Instagram, you just want to give like a short little intro of who you are, what you do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to throw a rubber band on this and hope that that helps. Okay. It. <laughs> that's it. Um, just the guy for it. Right. Uh, yeah, look, you know, I'm used to the shenanigans, so bear with me, you know, there's always something going crazy on uh -huh. my uh, live, so hang on. <laughs> no, you're good. I was going to say, I usually, um, I was having issues with figuring out how to rig up my camera for an overhead view, and I realized that's like one of the biggest difficult, you know, things that people Google to try to figure out how to set their like larger cameras up as an overhead, yeah. and I realized the best thing I found, and this is what I use now, is I purchased a uh, a big computer monitor holder. So, so like it's meant to hold really heavy computer monitors. Uh -huh. So like my little camera is not going to have an issue, and it attaches to the back of your desk, okay. big long arm, and then okay. it has the arm that comes out and and can move around. And it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me being able to, I had to buy a little gimbal thing to attach to the end of it for the camera, okay. but it's been the best setup I could ever have asked for. And now I use it for everything. Okay. All right. Uh, Good. Thank you. For I'll send you that yeah, in case you're ever great. interested. <laughs> that'd be great. Okay. Uh, well, I am Laverne Benton. Um, a lot of people call me Peach or Miss Peach or mm -hmm. Auntie Peach. It just depends. Um, I am the owner of Busy Peach LLC. Uh, I am based out of Atlanta, Georgia, but originally born and raised in Richmond, Virginia. All and right. Yes. Um, I specialize in luxury hand dye, cotton, tinsel, mm -hmm. uh, and a couple of blends, and they're new, yeah. uh, but primarily plant-based fibers. Gotcha. So, that's that's the quick down and dirty. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, I and it's it's so crazy that like cuz we lived in Atlanta for 7 years and I hate that we didn't discover each other sooner. <laughs> I know, I know cuz I think I messaged you about something. I was like, "Oh, I'll just pick it up." You're like, "Um, uh, <laughs> and cuz we had just moved. I know. And um I I hate to, you know, it was really I didn't really push pink sheep that much until COVID happened. Mm -hmm. So it was like COVID and then grow the business, leave my other full-time job, and then, you know, then leave Atlanta. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, right, like, right, exactly. Uh, exactly. But it's life, right? It is, it is. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I found myself in Atlanta after living in, in Richmond, Virginia for 46 years. Oh and you know, came down here for work with my full time job, and yeah, you know, they, life happens, right? Yeah, so changes and moves. So yeah. Um. So, I would love to know what got you into the fiber community to start with. So, did you? When did you learn to crochet or knit, or what kind of was that entry for you? Yeah. Um. My my I come from a creative family. Uh, my mom mm -hmm. was an artist and um, dabbling in a little bit of everything. Um, both of my grandmothers kind of did arts and crafts kind of mm -hmm. things. Um, one in uh, um, um, Sunday school with her kids and the other at the senior center with the other yeah. seniors. Um, so we were always doing something, you know, making something. Um, and one of my grandmothers, I don't really remember which one, you know, kind of mm -hmm. taught me to crochet um, when I was maybe about nine or 10. Gotcha. And, um, you know, I, I played with it a little bit, uh, did a little bit of crochet, you know, did some of the, you know, the plastic grid you can buy and you, you know, we aren't it, but you know, and everything else. Um, but never really got into anything beyond like, um, you know, a scarf or something simple. Yeah. I went back to school, um, when I was 38. 40, 38, okay. 39, 40, 40. Yes. 
you know, the numbers start getting too high. Uh, it's hard to keep count. <laughs> you were in your 20s. That's when you went back to school. No, listen, listen, I wish I could say that, but I just turned 50 yesterday, so I'm proud of it. Oh, happy birthday! Um, Woohoo! So I went back, I went back to, and got my MBA when I was 40, and I was still working full time. I needed something that was like to de stress. So I would sit and just crochet when I could just yeah. to relax yeah. and I mean I made queen size granny square blankets because I was just you know like going going yeah and didn't have to and at least the granny square it's like any you just get stressed and like make a granny square and then you get to put it all together yeah yeah but this these just like kept growing and growing and growing so they're just like huge <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, when I moved to Atlanta I was like I need some friends besides the people that I work with so yeah I found the crochet Facebook groups and um, there were folks that I did work with that crocheted and knitted. And we had a, a group at work that we met, you know, at lunchtime um, and did, you know, donations for charity. And we ended up finding Stitches United. Uh, I had never heard of like a yarn convention. I'm like, there's like a yarn con, what? what? And that yeah. opened my eyes up to hand dyed yarns. Fast forward mm -hmm. to the pandemic, one of those friends was like, hey, I think I'm going to dye some yarn. I'm like, you can do that from your house? She was like, yeah. And so I gave it a try. I fell in love, and here we are. Oh, my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So if, if you don't mind me yeah. asking, what did you do? Do you, you do this full time now? No, Is this full -time? I, not yet. Um, I still work um, full time for a corporate employer who okay. shall remain nameless, okay. <laughs> um, okay. uh, but in the banking industry and um, gotcha. have done that for, here we go with numbers again, 20, this will be my 27th year in May. Um, gotcha. And so I do this part time, um, you know, after hours, weekends, mm -hmm. um, but I really love it and I would love to turn it into my full time gig. So yeah. Let's see. Well, and I feel like you're on your way. And I, I think that's, you know, with the way that you have marketed and the things that you've done to grow your business and especially hearing about um, Vogue Knitting Live. And I definitely would love to hear about your experience. And I think that that's really where when you want to be a part of the industry, it's finding those industry events like you talked mm -hmm. about, finding these conventions, finding these um, yarn crawls and things, the big ones that you know you can network. And I'd love to know a little more about what that experience was like for you, wanting to grow your business. Yeah, um, I, you know, I, I, I like it. I love it. Um, I, you know, crocheting has, um, is fun for me. I enjoy cr making things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the yarn dyeing is an extension of that. I love, you know, playing in the colors and, you know, I'm kind of at the point in life where I'm like, um, yeah, I want to do what I want to do yeah. <laughs> all day, every day. Um, and so, you know, I really want to have my business be able to sustain my lifestyle and, you know, and my, and, you know, allow me to keep my roof over my head and yes. be the kid. So, you know, um, I, I think, um, you know, working towards that, it is, it is about networking. You know, it's about connecting with people. Um, during the pandemic, this this vehicle, Instagram and the yeah. other socials have been, uh, you know, were huge in allowing me to connect with people all over the world, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I just keep doing that. I, I like people in general. <laughs> um, I enjoy talking to people. And so networking, I think, kind of comes naturally to me after years and years of practice at my full-time job yeah. um and so yeah. that's just what I'm doing is looking at as I learn more each each day I'm learning something as I learn more mm -hmm. new events new um organizations new fiber artists um you know I I, I like to connect in ways that make sense yeah. um you know to me to them and then also in ways that can help me grow my business yeah. um, that's not the only reason, like, I really have a big um, desire to help grow our fiber arts community in, in several different mm -hmm. ways. But, um, you know, I do have to make money if I want to make this a full-time gig. So, yeah. 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 Definitely. So 
I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. So what was, what was Vogue Knitting Live like for anyone, especially for anyone who's interested? Because I heard about it. I was like, that's amazing. Don't know if I'm ready to travel to New York, oh. but maybe one day. Okay. Um, I would say if you, if you can go, go. Okay. Um, I think it's an amazing um, event to attend. Um, I, I um, heard about it um, right before the pandemic. Um, I started creating okay. yarn journals. And mm -hmm. um, Diane Ivy from Lady Di Yarns found me online somehow and was like, I love your, your journals because they feature, you know, people of color on the front. Yeah. And she's like, come then in my booth at VKL. I was like, sure. What's VKL? <laughs> <laughs> she was That's like, go start. Getting, right? yeah, like, go <laughs> getting live. I was like, okay, w yeah. what is that? <laughs> yeah. You know, and it took me about a week or two to connect the dots, like Vogue, Vogue knitting. So like, like Vogue, the magazine is connected uh -huh. to like a knitting and they have a knitting magazine and then they do a live event. Like uh -huh. it, I had never heard of it. So yeah. um, I went um, in January of 2020 mm -hmm. and uh, she was in her booth and sold my uh, journals. And that's oh, when cool. I was first exposed to it. And it was insane. It was packed. That's awesome. So that, how many people? Does it say about how many people go to that event? I, I Any know idea? How many went in 2020? I need to go back and look. Um, yeah. I but know that, that thousands, uh, hundreds, or thousands. You think? Um, no, th thousands. That's what I. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, it's just a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and and I know this year they were anticipating that the crowds were going to be, um, you know, a little bit lower, maybe about 60, 65 percent you know, from what they okay. have been in 2020. Um, and you could tell a difference, but for me being my first time vending in my own booth, it worked out well. Uh, That's I think otherwise I would have been overwhelmed. I wouldn't have been able to give hugs and yeah. you know, check people and, you know, kind of do my little peachy thing on top of selling. So yeah, um, yeah. so it, it was good. Um, I don't know if I answered your question because I felt like I was rambling. <laughs> no, you weren't. You weren't. I. I would love to know, so as a vendor, did you have any time to um, spend enjoying the event, you know, outside of being a vendor? Or do you feel like you, as a vendor, you do kind of have to pick and choose? Like, I'm going to have to be a vendor if I'm a vendor, or did you have some time to check other things out? I, I think um, you do kind of have to pick and choose. I think you have to go in with the expectation that you are, you, you can't participate as a participant fully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Vogue yeah. Knitting is a big event where there are classes, there are fashion shows, there are um, yeah. panel discussions and conversations. Um, so there's a lot of activities going on besides being in the marketplace. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to, you know, do a lot of that. Um, gotcha. Yeah, so I went in with that, that expectation. Now, um, I was able to leave the booth occasionally. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I did a little bit of shopping. Um, yeah. I did take some time um, on the last day to make sure that I, well, there are two floors for the marketplace. So I made, made sure okay. I had some time to go up to the sixth floor and, you know, at least say hi and network yeah. you know, with the vendors. Although I, mean, I didn't really have a lot of time to buy stuff. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so you do have to, you know, kind of be prepared. But if I can give a shout out, what let me even get out of the booth for that little bit was um, one, my partner in the booth, Tanita from Broken Crafty. Um, she had her bags in the booth. So, you know, she was my partner in crime that whole weekend. Awesome. But we had it, we had folks, my friends that came in and pitched in and like, you can't do a show alone. You can't. Um, Especially not, not at that level. I mean, it's one thing to just do, you know, smaller events and just have someone next to you watch your booth while you go to the bathroom. Yeah, but no. I think when you're working at that level. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I think if you're doing a smaller event, yeah, one or two people, you'll be fine. Um, I mean, it, it needs to at least be two people, right? Because if one of you needs to go to the restroom or just to mm -hmm. help, you know, with customer service, yeah. keeping things flowing. But at an event like this, I could not have done it without um, one, Aaron from the C-Word Crochet, um, she mm -hmm. gave me a lot of guidance with how to run an event, right? How to do gotcha. the event. 
check people out. She went and got grid walls for me from Robin at Birch Hollow Fibers and brought them down. Um, you know, like that in itself was huge. Um, and then um, my friend uh, Kamora, heiress to the thread, she came in and then she just helped. Yeah. Same thing with Roz, Crochet Rose. Like they just helped. They were there to help. They came in, they helped set up, they helped break down, they worked customers in between, they restocked. Gotcha. And like, gotcha. I, mean, I was like, okay, we need to have orientation. I'm, I'm a, yeah. very much a planner. I'm like, let me show you how to do this, how to do that. They just dove in mm -hmm. and did it. it so it, it, it's a it's a very big deal. Um, um, oh, also Sheila, um, which is um, Indigo Dog, her IG is Indigo Dogs. And if I forgot somebody, I apologize. Um, and then my two kids were there. <laughs> Like That's it took awesome. a lot. It was a whole village. It it was a whole yes. village. So um, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. Well, and it looks like a lot of these people you're mentioning are in the chat. Oh, so yeah. oh, I'm okay. so glad I've you been, guys are here. I ha I've been missing all of that. So oh yeah 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 yeah. Um, Yes. And then, you know, my crew that's behind me, pushing me, you know, along virtually for sure, you know, the whole time. So it, it takes a whole village. It is not a one woman show. It's true. It's true. And I think, I think what's been so nice about this community is, you know, most of us, especially whether you're doing it as part-time business or even as a hobby, I think it, it's a hobby that, um, or it's a craft that can mm. very much become an island, mm. you know, because we do it at home. I mean, some of us will crochet on public. Some of us have groups and guilds and things that we're a part of, but I, I think a lot of people don't. Yeah. Um, and I think that, in, you know, Instagram, Facebook, the groups on Facebook, the, the community that is formed through social media. Um, I, I feel like for me, I know that there's always negativity that comes with social media and getting lots and lots of people together. So Absolutely. we have very different opinions a lot of sure. times, but I think that there are some very, very positive things that have come from the online fiber community. And yeah. I, I'd love to know what your experience has been being a part of the community over the, the past couple of years or however long you, you've been a part of it. Yeah. Um, all of what you said, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, yeah. I, I, I feel like you're not doing anything if you haven't gotten out of a face, you getting got kicked out of a Facebook group or two, <laughs> um, which I have. <laughs> or at least been warned. I have been warned. So, oh, yeah. You know, it's. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Facebook groups and I have a love-hate relationship. I'm in a ton of them. Um, but I, you know, I'm I'm thankful they started putting the rules when you go to post because yes. I can't ever keep straight which ones I can advertise and which ones I can't. Or even you know. post links. I know there's one where if you post a link about anything, even if it's not selling, they'll kick, kick you out. out. Yeah. And I'm like, I just forgot. I forgot. Right. Sorry. Right. right. <laughs> so navigating that is a little bit of a challenge for me because I'm just, you know, I'm like, I just throw a picture together and I send it and I'm, yeah. or type something cute and send it. And I'm like, oh crap, I'm about to get kicked yeah. out. <laughs> um, <laughs> um yeah, I, um, you know, so that Instagram, I think by far is my favorite tool to use. Um, it, I don't know, it just works with my personality. I can, you know, flip through it pretty easily. And, you know, while there's drama that goes on over here on Instagram, too, for the most part, um, you know, I, I enjoy my experience. Um, um, I found a, a great group of women during the pandemic. We found each other all through you know, social media and, um, you know, we would do Zoom calls every Saturday for hours, hours. It, awesome. I really think it was more like unofficial group therapy. Yeah. We, we got yeah. each other the same. You know, we watched the kids grow yeah. up. We, you know, helped with, uh -huh. you know, family problems, you know, shared good times, upsetting times, all of those things. So um, I, by far, that has been um, the biggest most positive thing for me um there are negative things that happen um you know i try to deal with them but my um the way i like to handle things if something negative comes my way um i like i'll address it i'll answer questions about it but then i'm like what's the solution like what are we yes. doing how are we moving on from this i don't want to dwell in the problem um what can you do to fix it what can i do to fix it what can we do to fix it like that's that's kind of yeah. how I operate. Um, yeah. So yeah, I I um yeah I'm I'm all over these Instagram streams. 
Streets. <laughs> You'll find me well, on YouTube and Twitter and all of that stuff. But so you, you know, and I would love to know. So while we're on that topic, where are the different places people can find and connect with you? So if they have a place other than Instagram that they yeah. like to hang out, where are yeah, you? So <laughs> so um, I'm on Facebook. I have a page on Facebook. I do have a group go, on Facebook? Say that again? You have a group on I Facebook can, or just a page? But I shut it down because we're doing something a little different. And I'll kind of yeah. get to that at the end of the list. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, so I'm on Facebook. Um, I have a Facebook page. Um, and I post there. Of course, Instagram. Um, I have a Twitter page, so okay. a lot of what I post on Instagram gets automatically posted to the Twitter, but I do interact. Gotcha. Um, mm -hmm. I have a YouTube channel mm -hmm. um, where I've got some tutorials that need to be updated, and I'll post. Um, I'm working on getting all of the Instagram lives out on YouTube because I think it's yes. easier for people to find them, yes. um, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of scroll through and find them. Yeah. Um and to binge watch them while they crochet. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what, what, uh, where else am I? What, I don't know. Throw something out. I'm probably over there. Are you on Pinterest? Yes. Like, I'm not really, I'm not active on there anymore, but I'm I, on there. <laughs> I'm on there. Um, I'm very sporadic over there. Yeah. So some of my stuff might be a little dated, but yeah. uh, I'm trying to work out a way to have some things automatically post to Pinterest and from I did that for like a half a second I even had I had because I know Canva will let you schedule posts mm -hmm. to Pinterest and for like a month I was so good I had something scheduled almost every day to go to Pinterest to fill out the boards and then I just stopped yeah yeah <laughs> well there's a Maybe one day. there's a app or a, a tool called IFTTT um if okay. they, if this then that and what yeah. it does is it lets you set triggers. So if I do this, then this will happen. And there's okay. a way to set triggers that if you post something on Instagram and use a particular hashtag, the, it will automatically post it to Pinterest for you. Oh, cool. So I'm, I'm going to write that down. Yeah, I, I learned that from uh, Stacey Jackson at Pink Joy Crochet. Um, okay. She's really into tech stuff. So... Um, but it's I F T T T three okay. T's. Um, awesome. and it's kind of like a click, you know, uh, it, it, you don't have to know coding. Okay. Um, you just have to say, if I'm on Instagram and I do this, I want this to happen. Cool. Yeah. I like that. And do you have a newsletter that people can join? I do. I have a newsletter. So my website is busypeach.com. B Z Y mm -hmm. P E A C H dot com. Um, and at the bottom of any of the pages, you can um, subscribe to, you know, my site. You'll get emails, newsletters. I don't hit you over the head with them every day, every week, but, you know, I do try to keep people updated with the big yeah. stuff that's going on. Yeah. Um, the, the last thing is um, Slack. I'm on Slack gotcha. because, gotcha. yeah. Just, I don't know, but Slack is very similar, but for yes. whatever reason, um, I do better on Slack than, than Discord. Um, although I'm on there y'all, but I don't know. I can't figure it out. So anyway, so Slack, um, I use that for my connection with my busy showers account and our business showers for new and emerging black owned businesses. Gotcha. And that's what I'm using to grow community. So we've got channels yeah. about business growth. We've got channels where we just, well, I think we're still doing the Juniper Cow. It's kind of a catchy okay. um, pattern. So mm -hmm. we've done multiples each. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of ongoing. That's going in there. We talk about social media help. Um, people ask for website help. Um, and is it you know, so we have free for people to yeah. join? It okay. is. It's free. Um, okay. If you go to the link in my bio, you'll see where you can join. You just have to set up a, you know, a, a name and a password and you can come in and hang out. Um, but it's That's really, cool. it's, um, I really want it to be a networking tool where people can um, come in and kind of break down those barriers to entry if they're in business um, yes. or find community if they're not. Um, as a black business owner, 
um, black female business owner, there are just some barriers out there that, um, you know, need to be broken down. Um, conversations need to be had. And so that's kind of my space to support the, the other black businesses that, that in general we build community with, but everyone's welcome. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's amazing. I, I think starting a business in general can be so difficult. And I mm -hmm. think any way that you can, you know, use what you've gone through and, and the, the things that you've faced trying to start your business right. and give people help and, and, and encouragement and say, like, this is how I dealt with this situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even if you don't handle it the same exact way, right. at least it helps people kind of understand here are some different ways to handle this type of situation. Um, right. Because you like you, know, you can feel alone. You can feel alone yeah, when you're, absolutely. you know, trying to, even if you're not trying to start a huge business, even if it's just, I would like to go to a craft fair, right. you know, and I'm right running into walls, you right. know, I'm, I'm not getting accepted to these shows. Like what are, you know, how did you deal with yeah. this? And I think, yeah. you know, I, I think there, I, I feel, and I like to think that, that it has become a little easier for people to be more open yeah. with each other about, because I think it used to be very closed off. Sure. It's like, sure. I'm not sharing my secrets. I'm not sharing how I dealt with this. You just need to figure it out. And right. I think as a society, I feel like we've gotten better, at least again, I like to think that we've gotten better at being more open and being more honest and yeah. being more transparent in what we went through and how it can help other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes and no. You know, I, I think um, I, I, I think as a whole, yes. Um, but there are still some challenges and, you know, it, it can be scary when you're new or you're asking questions because you don't know if you hit somebody in their DMs and they're going to bite your head off or they're going to really, really help. Yeah. And so it can be kind of scary to take that chance. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's some things that I won't share. Like, I'm not going to tell you, like, what type of dye I use yes. or what my dye formulas yeah. are, but pretty darn near anything else you can ask me, right? And I'll, yeah. you know, share what I know or say honestly say i don't know yeah but maybe here's a resource right um yeah. but i think it takes courage on the, the on everybody's part not just the person reaching out into others dms it has to take courage um on our part as people willing to share the knowledge right because we have to trust that you know, the person coming to us is not trying to steal our business. They're not trying to steal our customers, you know, yep. kind of get over that. Um, and if they are, you know, to have the discernment to be able to suss that out and, you know, maybe gently yeah. let them go on their way. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't always have to be gently, but, you know, um, yes. I, that's how I operate. Um, and so it, it takes a lot of trust. It really does. Yes. And you can get burned. Yeah. I have been burned. Other people have been too. But I don't know. There's just something in me that keeps focusing on the positive and keeps trying. And I like to just encourage people to do that. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I, I think, um, I feel like sometimes if it weren't for my husband, I'd probably give way more information than I should. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd be like, here you go. Let me help all of you. This is wonderful. We live in a world where everybody is good and kind and nice. Yes. <laughs> I feel the same way. Um, and then it's like, oh, got smacked in the face. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I, I think I think you hit the nail on the head when you mentioned about resources, because I think I'm more willing to help when people are like, I want to break into something. Mm -hmm. Well, here are some great resources for you. Mm -hmm. Like, here are some things. So if you're just Googling it or searching on YouTube, I already know of some great videos that can start you out. You right. know, I've had people we have looked into possibly pouring resin hooks so like right now we 3d print them there's a mm -hmm. lot of resin makers out there who make handles and things like that and and hooks yeah and there are quite a few of them who were actually super super helpful now they weren't going to go into like all the details but they said here's the here's the resin that i decided to use and a lot of times because they have discount codes you know so like we're going to mm -hmm. get they'll get you know affiliate payments for it right um but that kind of stuff is super helpful when it's like, I just want to start out. They're like, well, here's, here's a video that I use to learn how to make molds. Right. You know, I'm not going to tell you how I made mine, but right. here's how I started. And then you can go from there. You know, Listen, you're brave. I, I have that as a, as an idea, as a thought. I tried. I'm going to leave that to you. <laughs> well, I we have to 
haven't, we haven't started. We we bought a few things okay. that, that kind of start out, but it's very overwhelming. I mean, I you know, I, I the, the people that have mastered it, you know, it, I'm, I, I see now like it took a lot and it's we're probably going to maybe do that some of it this year, at least try yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it takes time to refine, right? Just like with what yes. you're, you're printing and what you do as well. Um, it does take time to refine. Um, and I, I have to remember sometimes that I can't do all of the things. Yes. Although I want to. <laughs> yes. Well, and, and I wanted to ask you, so how has your family been in the support here? Because you talked about your kids coming to Vogue Knitting Live. So what has that been like? And how involved do they like to be um, in the business, if at all? Or if they just wanted to go to New York, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, they're surrounded by it because there's just yarn yeah. and dye and stuff everywhere. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it does have an impact on their lives, of course. Um, you know, my, my oldest is, um, you know, out, out of school and, and working. Um, okay. it, 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 it made a big difference for me because her last year in school, um, some of the profits from my business were able to help me kind of pay some of her tuition. Awesome. So, yeah. you know, that was, I mean, not all of it. We still got some loans out there, yeah. but you know, it, it That's helped. Huge, yeah, it, that was really huge, and I was very thankful for that. Um, um, my youngest, who is um, 11, getting ready to turn 12, um, she has her moments where she wants to help, yeah. you know, <laughs> more, so, <laughs> more so than not, more so not. Um, <gasps> you know, I think she, she wants to get paid to help. Um, okay. But gotcha. she's not quite ready to track what she's doing to get paid. Mm -hmm. You know, so okay. I can't believe in, you know, like, you have to help me help you. Yeah. Like, you know, yes. I'll give her a list and I'll give her some things, but I don't, like, I'm not, I don't want to be like, okay, look, you're on the clock, because then she's yeah. going to, like, run screaming. So, yeah. right now and then she's like, I'll take those out of the spinner. I'll hang those up. Yeah. Okay, you, you, you owe me, like, $10, you know, like. It's like process day. Yeah instead of hourly based work. So like well, task based. It, it, it was, we're trying to go to hourly so that I get a full hour from her. <laughs> right. What happens? Okay, so Roz just made a comment. She said, Lil Peach was real chill. It was fun having the girls there. Yeah, so at Vogue, um, Baby Peach, that's, that's the littlest one. Aww. She was in the room as much as she could. She was on her, you know, on the computer as much as she could. Um, and we kind of, you know, she kind of helped move things. Like if we meet, like, can you hand me that? Can me that? My oldest though, she had a great day on Saturday. Like she was helping to sell. She was helping to get people in. That's then awesome. she's like, okay, we're in New York at Times Square. I need to go shopping. I'm out. Yes. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. And how close were you guys to being able to just walk everywhere? I mean, were you right, to, right in yeah. Times Square? So okay. it's held at the um, New York Marriott Marquis which is right at on Broadway um, between okay. 45th and 46th. So it is at Times Square. Um, oh. So you are a block away from Times Square. Um, so everything is going on. Yeah. <laughs> um, we stayed in the hotel, which could be pricey, but it made for a smoother show. Like not having mm -hmm. to, you know, negotiate travel and moving around. You just went upstairs yeah. and went upstairs. Um, yeah, I think if you're vending somewhere i think sometimes you can get away with it mm -hmm. if you're attending mm -hmm. um but i th think if you're a vendor like i couldn't imagine getting you know stuck if you had to like you know take a taxi or an uber yeah. to your hotel and get caught in traffic i mean yeah. that would i feel like that could be devastating yeah yeah um yeah exactly especially like you know in a big city you know where traffic yeah. is, a, is a thing so um yeah, yeah absolutely so um, so that was good. But yeah, I mean, they, they enjoyed the trip. They had a good That's time. Good. They helped out a bit, you know? Yeah. But and it, it, it was a venture for them too. I mean, I think that's, you know, if, and I don't know if you travel a lot with your kids, but you know, I, I didn't travel a lot as a okay. kid. I mean, we didn't go, I think I had one international trip okay. with my family that I remember, but mm -hmm. we didn't do like the national parks. We didn't, you know, take a ton of trips. And sure. so I think like as a kid, it, that's huge getting to, to take trips like that. Yeah. Um, I, we were pretty well traveled growing up and my oldest, um, is definitely well traveled to the point where she's kind of like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. The youngest, she's cool. kind of like in between, but you know they're both 
you know, ready to fly. Not so much That's on the cool. car, but me either. I don't like being in a car forever. I'd rather fly. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, Understand, yeah, but it, but it's still it was a great adventure. Like we we had a good time. We did. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I, I would love to talk a little bit about um, where you find inspiration for your business. So whether that is the 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 colors that you use for your yarn when you decide to mm -hmm. uh, bring on new fiber combinations. I know you said that you're working with some. Mm -hmm. um, you said mi not mixtures. What's the word? Blends. Yes. Some <laughs> make sure it's one thing, you know, walking thesaurus. <laughs> Just, um, but I'd love to know where you pull some of your inspiration from with, with new colors and, and, and new offerings. Um, everywhere. I, I just, I like color. Um, yeah. so sometimes, um, you know, I'll be out and about and see something. I was coming back from Greensboro. My daughter was in college and there was a Camaro that was painted in camouflage, but it was purple, pink, and like a violet camouflage. Mm. I was like, oh, okay. I would make a purple yes. camouflage. So like, I couldn't wait to get home. So like the next day, you know, I was in there like, let me try this, let me try that. And it's actually pretty cool. And it may come mm -hmm. back this year. So um, yeah, like, hey. yeah, like it was super fun. Um, but then the challenge is I like to have everything with a fruit theme because, you know, like busy peach. The orchard, yes. da, da, da. So then I'm like, well, what fruit <laughs> am I going to call this? <laughs> I love um, like the colors of the year from Pantone and yes. Etsy and all. So I kind of brought, I brought one of my hats, which, you know, cause you're like the queen of all things chunky. So I had to <laughs> pull out. My, pull out <laughs> oh, I love it. Hat. Oh, that's, so that's nice. This was a colorway yeah. that I did for um, one of my yarn clubs um, last year. And that's so beautiful. Peach is always my color of the year, right? That's yep. like my color for life. Um, yes. Very Perry was, was Pantone's color of the year for 2022. Uh huh. Um, that was kind of that purplish color. Um, uh huh. And then Etsy's color of the year for 2022 was Emerald. And it looks so good together. Yeah, so I was like, let me see what they look like together. I don't, I, you know, I don't know that I would have in, picked those on my own. Yes. But I was like, let's see how they look. And I was like, oh, like that kind of works. I like it. So, and it what did you call that one? Uh, with what, the, the colorway? Yes. It was just 2022 okay. colors of the year. Nothing okay, cool. Fancy. <laughs> I couldn't think of, a, you know. Um. So then the hat, I just, I grabbed a big hook and kind of freehanded a basket weave and I mixed in a, um, a sock weight uh, white tinsel so you can kind of see it's kind of got yes. a little bit of white. You can, the, yeah. yeah. And, it gives and so I, some shine. Yeah, so tinsel has a bit of a shine um, to it. If folks aren't familiar with tinsel, um, these, are, these are the show colorways. Um, we did bring some back, unfortunately, but good for people who couldn't make it because now you can get the show colorway. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. So this, that is gorgeous. Is cotton, you know, which still yeah. has a nice little sheen to it, but this is the tinsel. So you see how the oh, light yeah. just kind of off of that? It's like the oh, smoke yeah. of plant fibers. I was going to ask what it yep. was. Yeah, because you said you like to work with plant fibers and natural fibers. Yep. So this yeah. is the tinsel, and it's made from wood. So they take chunks of wood grind them up, extract the larger um, fibers from it and spin them together. And so when, That's they, amazing. Yeah, when they do that, that, it comes up with this great sheen. Um, yeah. It's very similar to how rayon is produced. Okay. Um, but what's different about this with the tinsel is all of the um, water and chemicals that are used in it uh, get reused in the next batch. So there's pretty much no okay. water waste from That's it. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's it's just amazing. It's got crazy drape. And it's, and how does how do you feel strength wise oh, compared to very t very? If you tried to put this around your fingers and break it, you're gonna hurt yourself. <gasps> it it does not snap, and neither does my cotton. Because okay. some people okay. will say I can go to a certain big box store and find certain cottons on a yes. you know on a, on a comb. I know, right? Say, right. You know, uh -huh. twist it and pull it, and it'll snap. But yes. mine don't because this is Pima cotton. 
and it's a long mm -hmm. stable fiber. Um, so, okay. um, and I've got some in my uh, highlights, I've got some explanations of the differences. Okay, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But the colors, and I mean, they just come like this was peach tree meets Broadway. So like the peach and the green for the, the apple and the brown for, you know. That's so smart. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Sometimes the fruit influences the color. Sometimes, um, you know, um, I did a I did a uh, trunk show here at the Craftivist and uh -huh. wanted to do a particular colorway, and um, I called it Canopy City because Atlanta is a canopy city. You know, living here, mm -hmm. we have a lot yep. of greenery for a big, you know, metropolitan. We've got yep. a lot of trees, um, yep. but we also out of concrete too so like it was like a green kind of tan mix very earthy yeah. is what i'm feeling yeah yeah so but but not dark like a you know kind yes. of like a grassy celery green and a and a tannish you know concrete color um yeah so it really just depends on you know i can i can find inspiration in a lot of places it's just a matter of yeah. Can I translate it to a yarn um, and in a way that people will, you know, will enjoy it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do you feel has been one of your favorite colorways that you've ever made? Ooh. I, um, I know. The tough ones. So, <laughs> of course, I like my peach. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is, um, I'm trying to see if I have some near me. I can probably go grab one real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me do that. Hold on, two seconds. Because yeah. I got it right here. And just so everyone knows, if you missed part of this live or if you want to rewatch it, it will be available on my feed here. But I also have a playlist over on my YouTube Ooh. channel that has all of the Pink Sheep and Friends episodes. Oh, nice. So it sounds like it's what you're going to do. And it, it is. It's really nice to have it all there. And I can tell people then you can bookmark it because you can't search. I, I hate that Instagram got rid of the IGTV search where you yeah. could actually search the long, you know, the longer videos. I was like, at least they could have kept the search function. Well, the the closest <laughs> is, you know, you can kind of set up series of your, yes. of your life. So yep. when you go to either of our pages, right, you can go to the button that shows the videos uh -huh. at the top left, it has series. Gotcha. And so all of them are there and they're kind of in order, but I, it, it's still clunky, you know. Um, but yep. one of my favorite ones to dye, and yes. it's actually one of my most popular, is called Mythical Flying Reptile. Oh, I um, love that name. <laughs> <laughs> so I was inspired by um, the Disney movie Raya and the Last Dragon. Um, okay. Dragons and the main dragon in there was Sisu. Uh -huh. But there's a scene in where like Sisu and all of the other dragons are kind of there and it's just bright and you know colors are swirling everywhere and they're greens and blues and purples and it's just a lot and um oh Kay is using it now. yes I'm gonna say that yeah and I, I was so inspired again the next day I was you know in the dye studio the lab huh? my kitchen um <laughs> get up hey and so yeah. this is one one of my favorites today oh, and it's yeah one of my biggest sellers yeah so this is it on the tensile um so and each skein is different you know some will be a little bit more, some will yep. be a little bit more this one te happens to be a little bit more of a tealy color mm -hmm. um, but uh, this this is definitely one of my favorites to dye yeah. um, and i tend to reach for it when i'm just like I have a project, but I just want to have something in my hand. I found that yeah. I've been, I grab towards it more. Yeah. Um, and That's this so is interesting. On... I, I just realized, um, let me see if I can grab them. So it made me immediately think we just released our, it was our first um, run of hooks this year yeah. um, for, for this year. And it was mermaid. Oh, and it's that same. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So I was like, OMG, that's like the same, because in ours was the same way. I had a few that were almost all teal and just a teeny bit of purple because of the way it prints. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them had quite a bit of that, the the, the change, which was really nice. Is that so, glittery? Is it like glittery too? Yes. Yeah, so oh. we do, uh, we start off with the base 3D print that comes off of the, the, um, the bed, and then we have to sand them down, right. get them nice and smooth, 
And then we do the first coat of resin will actually have the glitter. Okay. Um, so you can see the, the, the shine in there. And it's, it's really hard to show, but no, the I glitter that we chose. Yeah, this one, we used a purple glitter, a teal glitter, and a silver holographic. So it's got a little bit of everything. And then the second coat of resin is just clear resin to help make sure that there's not that you can't really feel the glitter. We try to make them even smoother. Yes. Um, yeah, I love glitter and color. So, <laughs> Girl, listen, definitely. Okay, so, so that's like, this is perfect. Yeah. So obviously I'm gonna have to, I'll be, you know, shopping after this. Um, <laughs> what's the smallest hook that comes in? What's the smallest size that one? So comes? we actually, and this, it's, a, it's interesting because we had only made down to a 10 millimeter for the longest time. Right. Because they're 3D printed and because we were like, we don't want them to be not strong enough. Mm -hmm. um, and so we did experiment and we created an eight and a nine millimeter. So the smallest, we now have an eight millimeter. Um, and I'll show you that really quick. But what's yeah. interesting is that the eight and nine millimeters are actually a little bit heavier than the 10 mm -hmm. because... Uh, we had to put so much infill in them so that they're stronger. So instead of, if you broke, broke this in half, yeah, yeah, yeah. it'd be almost solid. Whereas our other ones, if you break them in half, you could see like a grid structure. Okay. Yeah, but that's our eight, eight millimeter. Oh, um, okay. Oh, I can't wait. To, I can't wait till we get our soggy bottle. I and then this. I will tell you, we just this year, we started doing, um, let's see if I can get my little box. Oh. We started offering hybrid hooks because because people wanted the smaller sizes so let me find a smaller one so like this is the 2.5 so it's just you about the, go down the metal to, you go down oh so i think the 2.5 is the smallest we go down to and it is the the amazon brand uh -huh. tapered so like it's not a boy it's not a bait it's okay. the just the standard kind of tapered but it's it's actually pretty like i kind of liked the amazon ones better mm -hmm. because the yeah. boy to me they i feel like the boy ones tend to have um like here's here's a side by side actually which i think is pretty cool okay so the tan one is a boy yep. and the pink one is amazon yeah. Yeah. and to me i like a little bit pointier but it's not a, a full-on inline right you know so it's interesting. It's interesting to see the the different, yeah. you know, um, types that are out there. Listen, I'm, that made me really excited. You said it was a two point what? Two point five? Uh, two point five. Yeah. Um, and then I think we still have. Uh, let's see. We have a four as well. Okay. So this is a four. Four right, millimeter. So save, save a two point five for me and eight. Cause um yeah okay. I'll be buying them. don't even put them away um <laughs> because you know I, I love to do amigurumi also so like yes you know, a language when you said the two point five but it's got a thick ergonomic ham, ha handle that's the key yep. to not have yep. that hook hurt your hand so yeah and it's it's interesting because you know the 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 base mm -hmm. it's a happy accident because it'll stand up I mean like it'll stand up on its own. But we do it because it has to print like that. You know, it has to mm -hmm. print bottom up that supports it. Um, but I've heard after we had enough people using them and giving us feedback that it's it it gives them a place to rest their hand. Mm -hmm. So it keeps their, their hand from slipping down off the end of the hook. And I was like, another happy accident. There we go. Oh, no, absolutely. I can't wait. Like, I, I already like your hooks anyway, because, you know, I was super excited. Thanks. I had to pull them out. Yeah. The contest i had you know i did my little contest yeah. and this was so much fun y'all so what month so is it again so i believe we give everyone and i've got to remember it's it's in the summer yeah. so i think we announce it in may okay and then i think you have all of june if i remember correctly i think you have all of june to decorate and i think july we do the judging and the announcement and all of that oh, i had so much fun with this like I, I mean, and and so this one is Simone's um, baby I peach. She love that. Yes, gold on it. I'm like, girl, do whatever you want. Yes, um, that was the point. Yes, and so, so she did hers, and you know, of course, I had a peachy theme. So I had a a lady. She was sitting in crochet. And you you coded that one. I mean, can you yeah. use that one? Yeah, it's yeah. Kind of resin. Yeah. So I can use this one. Hers. Not That's so awesome. Much, but yeah, yeah I but you could. I coded my.
with resin and I love um it. but I, I don't want to use it. Like I just look at it. <laughs> um it's a work of art. It is. And it's so much fun. So I, cause I missed the the year before and I was yes. like, and that oh. was the first year. Yeah. So last year was year two. And Man. if anyone's here and you don't know what it is, super, super quick rundown. We sell um and I don't even have a white one in here, but we sell plain white mm -hmm. 3D printed hooks straight off the printer yeah. um, that you can decorate. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you do whatever you want to do. If it's markers or Sharpies or paint or whatever, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you decorate them. And then you submit uh, pictures and or videos of your finished hook. Mm -hmm. And then we actually have prizes. So we have three different categories. We've got a kid's category. We've got um, a usable category. If your hook is still usable mm -hmm. after you're done, we have a non-functional category. So if you make like a sculpture or something where you can't actually use the hook, um, that's a whole right. separate category. Um, and so it's just, it, we wanted to create something where like, you know, you're like, you, like you said, your family can get involved even if they don't crochet. So they right. can do something fun with you. Um, it's during the summer, which for some of us is a little, a little more of a downtime. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and we wanted something outside of crochet. So like it gets your brain thinking like, what else can I do to be creative? So I, I did. I loved it. Cause I put like, I put some crochet in there. Yes. Cut up a piece of the, um, uh, popsicle stick. Mm -hmm. um, the little, I love the little peaches or they, are they peaches? Yes. Yeah. So they actually were, um, when I was doing some other resin, like I do the res did the resin keychain. Yes. I said, yes. um, it's a black owned company called S SBN craft uh -huh. and they do all the glitter and cabochons and all of those yes. little things. And I, uh -huh. I had peaches. So I was like, Oh, I like, that's I'm awesome. Y'all. So instead of putting them in the resin, I, you know, I was like, well, let me put them here. I could paint. Yep. Um, I use it. You can kind of see the lines. Um, yes did that on the cricket so oh that's awesome and it printed some squiggly like i found that's it. really smart yeah that, yeah that was a little pain in the patoot but um <laughs> yeah so it's a lot of fun so I'm, that's awesome i'm i'm so glad and i'm just glad you enjoyed it i mean that's 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 all we want is we wanted something you know people can have fun with it but then, then we have fun because we like to see all the finished ones, you know. Yes. But I have, a, I have a question for you. So, yeah. one of my um, favorite yarn um, companies, um, other than my own, <laughs> is um, Knit Collage, and so yes. do you use their stuff. So I have not yet. So uh, this was that I made. But I've it's been on my to do list to get like a kit from them or something because it's just so cool yeah so I, I saw this and you know it had a peachy pom-pom and there was That's a knitting amazing. well I'm not I'm not gonna knit but yeah um so it's a, it's a little short because you know as crocheters our stuff uses yeah. yarn yeah but this yeah. is my favorite oh I love it and I love it I was like I love it. I my chunkies like just for you I was like I gotta yes but look, when I was in, when I was at Vogue, um, they were my neighbors. They make fabulous booth neighbors. Um, I bought some more of their yarn. So I bought. Oh the, my. Oh my God. It's white with like gold um, strands in it. Let's see. What is it? It is. Fun cloud French vanilla. Um, let's see. U.S. Well, it says needles, but you know, hooks is our thing, yeah. right? U.S. <laughs> right. Like, they don't even include the hook size. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, they are knit collage. So, I know. know. All right. And yeah. then, but, and oh then the peach version of it. That's and then there's, you know, gorgeous. like daisies and all kinds yes. of stuff. But then they had the fabric that uh -huh. they made separate. So, what are you going to? I, so okay so that's what i figured i was like oh this is perfect i kind of forgot we were supposed to do this today um and so this was perfect because i was like now i can ask you like which of your patterns can i use to make something with this so this is let me see how much it is yeah tell me the yardage okay so these are 100 yards each the mm -hmm. the, the cloud one so i guess i have 200 yards of this 
and that'll be kind of interwoven with um with the fabric and let's see the fabric is 60 yards so that's going to be kind of sporadic okay because that could be like in between rows i would yeah, think or you know. I just hold it together you know with yeah me. but okay so do you have something that uses 200 about like a hat or a yeah, yeah so i have um one of my favorite pieces which i think would be interesting with that yarn because um for whenever I've made one, I've held two strands together, but I think if you only used one strand, it could still be, uh, it would make it almost like flowier. Mm. Um, and that is, if I have one, let's see. Oh, there's one up here. Mm -hmm. Grab it. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so this is my, and you may actually be able to hold them together. I need to look at actually how much the yardage was that I used for these. <laughs> Cool. Oh, that's my dog. Sorry. <laughs> he just knocked a whole bunch of stuff down, and now he's in the craft room, but that's okay. Um, so this is the, it's called My Favorite Cowl. Ooh. And it's like yes. the, that kind. So I've got that one, and it's just called My Favorite Cowl. And then I have um, what went with this, which was, and actually another interesting thing that you could do is I have a, um, the pom-pom hat mm -hmm. which would be similar to yours but just a little bit longer mm -hmm. and it uses half double crochet mm -hmm. and maybe only, only half double crochet okay um pom pom hat but then there's matching fingerless gloves that would go with it Ooh. so that could be cool too and both of those are called it's just it was my favorite collection so okay. i've got my favorite cowl favorite pom pom hat and favorite gloves fingerless gloves yeah um the other thing that might work um depending on the yardage would be i have um it's called the molly shawl mm. so it's just a triangle shawl mm. that you can make with one strand of super bulky um but i can't remember how much i ended up using because you really just make it to size so it's like, so like however the, big you want to make yeah it. i like the cow and the hat because i don't know how to <laughs> style i love well, making them but i have to style them so well, I will send you those patterns, and then you can just let me know what you think, and I would love to see them. Yeah, I don't, yeah it's fine. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I no, think that'd be fun. Is, this is perfect, because I was like, oh, this is great. I got the cool yes. fancy yellow, and I could get a good pattern. Because, you know, all of my stuff is skinny. Like, I have, yes. you know, fingering. I have sock weight. Yep. The thickest yarn that I have is Aran weight, um, and it's still a skinny Aran because it's cotton. Um, gotcha. but, um, and you know, and then when I find specialty ones, I, I do use, yeah. Them. but, um, I, um, yeah, I do hold a lot of mine together. I mean, that can get a little pricey, yeah. but you know, when I just want something quick. Yes. And this will be super fast. Mm -hmm. So I'll send you those and let me know. Cause you might finish them tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah. me, like, like I will be like, Oh, I got a pattern and, and I got, look, yeah. Got my big hook. Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, well, we will have to do another one. Well, I mean, I'm going to go live with you two soon. Yeah. Um, but we'll have to do another one of these because it's just so easy to talk to you, and we could pick a topic next time and and go crazy with a specific topic. Um, but I'm just so thankful that you were able to come on today. It was fantastic, and thank you to everyone who joined in. Yeah. Um, and to anyone watching the replay, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see yeah. you on Saturday morning shenanigans. Yeah. And uh, we'll have a good time again. So, absolutely. All right. Well, have a great weekend. And everybody else, y'all have a great weekend, too. And we'll talk soon. Okay. Happy hooking, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>